Welcome to Daniel's Kitchen and a little bit of a cooking segment, which is, uh, it's been a while since we've done a cooking segment on the channel, but a couple of you guys have been commenting, asking for more cooking segments, so here we are. Uh, so tonight I'm getting a little bit experimental for dinner. I'm doing a version of carbonara, or my plan is to do a version of carbonara. It's also got some uh, extra ingredients. I've bought some chorizo crumb to make it a little bit more, I don't know, give it a bit more flavor. And I'm also gonna be chucking Everything's moved around in my fridge. Going to be chucking some... Uh... <laughs> okay, so my plan was to put some pesto in with it, but I've accidentally bought some uh, coriander paste instead. And I don't really like coriander, so no more pesto or coriander. We're going to stick with the chorizo though. So essentially it's going to be a pretty simple carbonara with some chorizo. That's all that's going on. So I've chucked a pot of water on the boil already to get set for cooking our spaghetti. And now I'm just gonna prep some ingredients. I've got an onion, some garlic, uh, bacon, a chorizo crumb. That will, uh, I'll get that cooking in the frying pan. And then I'll be mixing some cream in there and some Parmesan cheese and should be good to go, I reckon. But that's the rough plan anyway. So let's get these ingredients prepped. I remember I was catching up with a good friend of mine, oh, must have been about 10 years ago now, or maybe longer. You'll know who you are if you're watching this video. And uh, we're chopping up some onions, and I was like, oh, I'll take care of that. I know how to chop onions. I had no idea how to chop onions, but I thought, oh, I'll just give it a go. And I'm chopping away, chatting away to um, his family, and I've slipped, and I'm just like, I'm like, oh, I felt that. And I look down, and I've like chopped the tip of my thumb off, but I'm trying to play it cool, so I'm just in the kitchen, just chatting away to his um, to his family, and it got to a while, like blood was starting to go everywhere, and it's like, sorry, I'm just gonna have to run to the sink. Uh, I've chopped the tip of my thumb off, and ever since then, that friend, you know who you are, never lets me chop onions when we try and make our delicious camping meals. So this can be proof that I've learnt, I've, um, I've mastered the ways of chopping onions. Although if you're watching this with any sort of culinary skills, you're probably uh, wincing right now watching my technique. But I'm happy to report I haven't chopped any fingers off since that fateful night all of, uh, must be 10 to 12 years ago, I reckon. I don't know what technique you're supposed to use for this, but basically I just go down here, cut a whole bunch of grooves in the onion one direction, and then just uh, chop it the other way, and it seems to make pretty nice little cubes. Now I'm gonna chop up uh, some garlic as well. Now quantities, I'm um, just make up whatever you feel is appropriate. I'm a big fan of onion and garlic, so I kind of go to town on it. But if you have a more delicate palate, you might wanna use a few less, but I'm probably gonna use literally half a garlic. So I'm just gonna dice this garlic nice and finely. I'm not using the best knife for this because it kind of has a, uh, a ridged bottom on it. So you probably want a flat bladed knife if possible, but you know, just make do with whatever you got. Still gonna get the job done eventually. Next up, I'm gonna dice some bacon. I suppose this is optional when we're putting chorizo in anyway, but I've got some leftover bacon. So I thought why not chuck that in as well? So my water is just about boiling and ready for the pasta, so I'm just gonna get the other ingredients cooking on the side. I actually bought this frying pan particularly for uh, this meal tonight, because I needed a dish, whereas my uh, normal frying pan is square and flat. So in with a bit of olive oil. I'm gonna chuck the uh, onion and the garlic in first. It's just started raining too, so I hope the camera's not getting too wet. If this, uh, this video cuts short, then uh, the camera's died. I'm just giving the garlic and the onion a bit of a head start and we'll chuck the bacon in soon. While that's cooking, I'm just gonna quickly uh, whisk an egg into this cup so we've got it ready to go later. So I know once uh, this all starts cooking, it's gonna be mayhem in the kitchen. Looks like that water is pretty much ready for the pasta as well. Okay, that egg's ready to go for when we need it later. And that water is boiling and ready for the pasta, which is great. So I'm just gonna cook half of this packet of pasta because it's just me. Maybe a, maybe a little bit extra. There we go. And now we're pretty much ready to chuck the bacon and also the chorizo in with the onion and garlic as well. All right, just chuck all that chorizo crumb in, I reckon. 
more the merrier. And just give that a bit of a stir around. Got to need a little bit more olive oil in there, I think. It's just starting to stick a little bit. That is already smelling amazing. Should I flip it? You dare me? I'll probably lose it all. We'll do a little one. Oh. Problem is I get I get confident and then I just go for it and I'll lose my whole dinner. Now for making the sauce, once this gets a little bit more cooked, I'm just gonna be using cream. It would be better if I had some white wine as well to kind of put equal parts white wine and cream, but I couldn't justify buying a whole bottle just for, just for this dish. So just cream it is. A good tip is to use a bit of the pasta water as well. So once this gets a bit more cooked, I'll probably spoon a couple of, uh, couple of uh, spoons of the pasta water into that as well, as well as the cream. Mm, I tell you what, if you could smell this right now, your mouth would be watering, I guarantee it. Apologies if I've got some uh, vegetarian viewers of uh, gone double meat on tonight's dinner. So my camera is quite wet, but so far it seems to still be working. I will. I tell you what, I've been a big fan of cast iron for my whole camping life, but I'm actually uh, really appreciating this non-stick pan. So <laughs> I'm sure it's not going to last very long, but at least for, for the short term, $20 pan from some kitchen store, loving it. Now, because my pasta is almost finished cooking and I do want to preserve some of that pasta water for my uh, carbonara sauce, I'm just going to take a plastic cup and just scoop out some of that pasta water for use later on. And now I think my pasta is pretty much done, so I'm just gonna get ready to strain that using, uh, just using the lid of the saucepan, essentially. Now, a bit of a tip to stop the pasta from sticking together now that I've already drained it, because if I leave it sitting like that, it's gonna start clumping together. Just take a, a bit of olive oil and just drizzle it on that pasta. Not heaps, just a little bit like that and give it a bit of a toss around, and that's just gonna lubricate that pasta so it doesn't stick together. Whoa, almost lost it. I'm getting too uh, confident with my flicking. All right, chuck that lid on so it stays nice and hot, and now over to this uh, carbonara sauce. So now that all these ingredients are cooked pretty much to the level where I would happily eat it straight out of the pan like that, I'm now gonna take uh, my pasta water, and I'm also gonna take some cream, So I've just bought some cooking cream. I'm pretty sure any sort of cream will probably do the job. Sorry, I should have mentioned this earlier. I am no chef, nor do I have any cooking experience whatsoever. So take everything I tell you with a pinch of salt, but I reckon my food tastes all right. So uh, anyway, let's see how we go. And now I'm gonna go for about half of this and we can always add more if we need it, but I reckon half is gonna be a good amount. Bit more. Now I'll add some of this pasta water in as well. Not a lot, like I know I've uh, decanted about half a cup, but I'm probably gonna use about, about half of that, so a quarter of a cup in total. Once that's in, give it a bit of a stir around and watch this carbonara sauce appear before our very eyes. Oh, ho, ho. the chorizo is giving it a really nice orange color. This looks awesome. I've got the heat turned right down low as well, because I kind of just want to just slowly warm this sauce up. Now, this is the part where I was gonna be adding some pesto to give it that uh, bit of a basil flavor. Obviously, that didn't pan out as planned, so I will just be adding some Parmesan cheese. Now, I like to be quite generous with this just to give it that nice, uh, nice cheesy flavor, but this is the type of thing you just add to taste. Just adding a bit of uh, salt and pepper to this as well. Give that a stir around so the cheese melts through the sauce. Oh, I'm getting excited, it's almost ready. So the very last step for this carbonara sauce is just to take that egg that I whisked up earlier, add it to the sauce. Just kind of pouring it around like that. Give it a stir and turn that heat off straight away. You don't want to overcook that egg and there's plenty of heat in that sauce already to get it cooked nicely. And you'll notice as soon as you pour that egg in and start stirring that that sauce really thickens up. That's why I wanted to make sure it was uh, pretty runny before because if you try and thicken it up when it's already thick, it just uh, it doesn't go to plan. 
And there we go, our delicious carbonara with chorizo sauce is completely ready to go and I am very, very keen to, to taste this. So now I'm gonna add my cooked pasta to that sauce and hope I cook the right amount of pasta. Actually, it looks, looks pretty much spot on. And there we go, chorizo carbonara cooked and ready to go. Smells amazing, looks amazing. Only thing left to find out now is does it taste amazing? Well, no cooking segment can ever be properly complete without the first official taste test on camera. Mm. Oh yum, that is really good. Honestly, that is so good. The um, chorizo gives it a little bit of a kick, which is nice. Like, I don't mind a little bit of spice in my meals, but all the other carbonara flavors are still there as well. So, definitely recommend giving that a go if you're looking for some camping meal inspiration. I really have a lot of fun uh, experimenting with new things like this. Uh, I know we just added one ingredient, but that's still an experiment in my books. Thank you so much for coming along once again, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. It's so good. It's so good. We've got so much more. Made like, made like three meals.